hi everyone in uh, today's video i am going to teach you something very important something that you don't know about a rule uh, which discusses the vessel that is restricted in her ability to maneuver now to not make it boring i don't want to go into the rule and explain the rule to you right now what i want to discuss is an example which will uh, convey the point that i am trying to explain to you about this particular rule so this is rule number three part g which explains what is a vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver now understanding this part will help you to clear up the concept about this kind of vessel all right so let's understand what is the case study here and how this rule applies to the case study so that we can understand the application of this rule all right so in a river there was a vessel uh, that was uh, proceeding down vessel a was proceeding down in a river and in the same river there was another vessel b vessel b was uh, riding to her starboard anchor this is her starboard anchor and she had just heaved up she had just heaved up her port anchor so her port anchor was up and she was riding to her starboard anchor as you can see in this diagram all right so in the next uh, diagram you can see that vessel a uh, was proceeding as it uh, required to but vessel b uh, although she was still riding to her starboard anchor uh, there was a natural swing uh, around it and in uh, in this case the natural swing caused the vessel b to swing directly into the path of vessel a so this is uh, still still riding on starboard anchor right it's still riding on starboard anchor and but it has swung in the path of vessel a right so when it swung in the path of vessel a in, as a result there was a collision between vessels a and b now what vessel a said was that vessel b should have kept clear of it right whereas vessel b argued that she was anchored and hence restricted in her ability to maneuver all right so this was the argument given by vessel b that because she was anchored she was restricted in her ability to maneuver and hence she could not keep clear of vessel a right so what is the answer to this so what was decided in court so the, both the vessels of course went to court and what did the court decide so let's understand whether vessel a was correct or vessel b was correct by understanding what rule number 3g says which explains what is a vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver so if i go into rule number 3 as you can see here i have the rule number 3 open in front of me and uh, this is rule number 3 it provides general definitions so somewhere here rule number 3g explains the term vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver which means a vessel which from the nature of her work now this is the important bit that the court highlighted nature of her work is restricted in her ability to maneuver as required by these rules and therefore unable to keep out of the way of another vessel now this was the key phrase that the court highlighted so what does what what does nature of the work include but not limited to so what it includes is vessel engaged in laying servicing picking up a navigation mark submarine cable or pipeline what else does it include it includes vessel engaged in dredging operations surveying or underwater operations vessel engaged in replenishment or transferring persons provisions or cargo while underway a vessel engaged in the launching and recovery of aircraft vessel engaged in mine clearance operations and a vessel engaged in a towing operation such as severely restricts the towing vessel and her tow in their ability to deviate from the course now what the court says was that uh, in rule 3g it clearly says the types of work specified in the rule which involve highly specific as well as non standard activities unlike the examples which are given in rule 3g heaving anchors is a typical ordinary regular activity for a vessel 
now had the drafters intended to include such a ordinary or highly ordinary activity of heaving anchors in the nature of work so is in the nature of the work heaving anchors included no it is not nature of the work does not include heaving anchors as per the definition now if the if the drafters that was vessel b if they really wanted to uh claim that because of heaving anchors or because of riding to an anchor they were restricted that should have been mentioned in the nature of the work which was drafted for vessel b so in this case vessel at anchor or heaving of the anchor is not considered a restricted inner ability to maneuver so the court said that they will generally be very reluctant they will not be interested to indulge in their own judicial innovation of collision regulations which means that they cannot allow a vessel riding to her anchor or a vessel heaving up anchor to be considered as a vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver so in this case vessel b was found to be at fault right found to be at fault and vessel b should have kept clear of vessel a so vessel a in this case of course won the court proceeding and vessel b had to pay the damages so this teaches you a lesson as well that if you are riding to an anchor or you are heaving up anchor you cannot claim your vessel cannot claim that it is restricted in its ability to maneuver unless it is drafted in the nature of your work as performed by your type of vessel if it is not so then that will be considered a routine activity an ordinary a regular activity for the vessel in this case you become a vessel that should keep clear of the other vessel as well so i hope you guys understood this key requirement about a vessel restricted in ability to maneuver and i thought i will explain it better if i use it in a case study let me know if you guys have any other questions about this rule i try to keep my videos short at the same time try to explain it enough so that you understand it for your written or oral examination